travel all around and do that. And somehow, from uh, as if out of the sky, money would come, and I would be able to continue on this path. And it's really living on total blind faith. And living on inner guidance and blind faith is kind of like jumping off of cliffs because you know when you jump off of a cliff, either... There's no net. Yeah, there's no (laughs) net. So either God is going to catch you or you're going to have to learn how to fly real fast. So that's what I did. I just jumped off these cliffs and just followed the guidance, followed the guidance, followed the guidance, and I've... And that's the way I've really been living ever since I learned how to listen to the still, small voice of God within. And I learned it actually quite late in my life. It was already, I don't know, um, I don't know exactly what age, but it was 1989 that I learned this method of listening to the divine voice. And since then, I have really done my best to listen to that voice and follow the guidance. And believe me, it's challenging. It's not, you know, it's, <laughs> it, it does require faith, and it requires effort, and it is challenging for the following reason. And that is that God wants us to grow, to expand, to become all that we can be. So the assignments that we're given, when we, are, when we follow that guidance, it, it's going to be something that will stretch your envelope, that will make you expand, because God wants you to grow and to expand and to stretch your envelope. So, so therefore, you'll be, you might be guided to do things that are challenging. And, but when you do them, <laughs> if you're willing to do them, then it will be very miraculous. I, I totally can't agree. Say that I have mastered this. <laughs> it's, it's still challenging, and so it's difficult sometimes to follow that divine voice. It's very true. <laughs> you said that money would come in at the eleventh hour, fifty ninth minute. Right. That's I a mean, scream. The, I love it. Yeah. That it just following the guidance, trusting, following the guidance, trusting, and then the money would be there for me to pay for the next booth at the next next expo. What can I say? You know, it's just. You know what I call it? Need to know financing. <laughs> you need to know financing, right. Yeah, like you only need to know at the final minute. You don't right, get any exactly. advance warning. It's unbelievable. On a need to know basis. Exactly. My parents thought I was absolutely out of my mind when I did this back in my 30s. Well, everyone thinks that one is out of their mind if they're listening to the voice of God because who listens to the voice of God? Only people in straight jackets. In insane asylum. Yeah. I'll tell you, though, I met incredible people. I was hosted all over the United States. Doors opened up all over the place. I didn't have a traditional home or apartment. In other words, I was on the road for quite a while. Actually, I have been on the road since 1989. I've lived in a van, a trailer, or a motorhome since 1989 because that's what I was guided to do. Now, I'm not saying that everybody's going to be guided to... (laughs) to sell their house and go live in a motorhome. Indeed. But that's my path. That's what I was guided to do. And you'll find that your life is going to become quite amazing and quite adventurous and quite wonderful if you start to listen to that divine voice. I'm scared to go meditate now. I I mean, if they took me around the United States the way they did years ago, I mean, I had to really get grounded and come back to reality. You know, I'm scared of the next round. (laughs) Exactly. I think they're sending me to Europe. It's still important for us, if we're going to follow this path, if we're going to listen to the still, small voice of God within, then it's a good idea to, if you're going to ask a question of spirit, to be willing to hear the answer. You know, don't even bother to ask the question if you don't want to know the answer. (laughs) Yeah, I asked a question many, many years ago about how to solve a big worldwide problem. And for 15 years, I was on the road meeting people. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh so I'm very careful when I ask a question. <laughs> Scared to death. I told Thich Nahan, you know, I have to tell you, there's something sneaky about asking a question because the question sends you out on a wild adventure. You better That's be prepared. Right. The questions are like transportation. It's like having your own plane, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you talked also about original sin. I'm really glad you talked about it because I think that a lot of us have ingested that just by being born, we're bad. 
I want you to talk a minute about that. I think it's important that a lot of people who love Jesus and love the teachings of Jesus or even the Hebrew Bible have somehow ingested that there's something wrong about our being born, we fell out of grace with God. That cosmology can also shape the way we solve problems, the way we listen. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so everybody has a, I shouldn't say everybody, many people have a misunderstanding of what is meant by us falling out of grace with God. So the thing is that it's true that we did fall out of grace with God, but the story of the Garden of Eden is vastly misunderstood, and people have their own weird interpretations of what that story means. People think that it means that they had sex, uh, and that sex is the original sin, but in fact, the original sin, or the sin, the reason why we are, have incarnated is because we didn't realize God, as I mentioned earlier in the call. And that is that, okay, the Garden of Eden is an allegory. You know, it's not to be taken literally. And it means that we should be, at all times, living in a state of grace. We should be living in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden means that we are living in a, in a state of oneness with God, that we are merged with God, that we are living in the heart of God, that we are living in the house of the Lord, so to speak. So that means that we are following our divine guidance, that we are, that we are, in fact, merged with God, that we have realized ourselves as God, that we know who we truly are, and we have, we have attained full, full divine realization. We have realized that we are in the presence of God all the time. And that's what you could say, Adam, Eve, were in that state of grace. They were living in, in paradise. And paradise is not a place. Paradise is in your mind. It is your own experience. It is a higher level of consciousness. So we have fallen from, you could say, we've fallen out of that and into duality, Okay, we ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. What does that mean? The fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? It means we have tasted of duality. We've created duality in our minds, good and evil. Good and evil represent duality. So when we fall out of oneness, we're no longer in oneness, which is the the state of Eden. The state of Eden is a state of oneness. And then we eat of that tree of good and evil, meaning we realize now or we have have fallen into the state of duality. The state of duality is the separation between ourselves and God. It is when we decide that we are a separate entity, the I is created, I meaning the letter I, which means our own individual identity, our own ego gets created, and we are no longer in paradise because we are no longer one with God. So that is what happens. And then we are banished from the garden. We're no longer in paradise. And we're living in hell, basically. Living in the ego is living in hell. But returning to God through meditation, through prayer, you can return to God and you can experience yourself as God, and then you're living in paradise. You're back to Eden So it's really that simple, and the original sin, which is people, they don't really get it, but the original sin would be to fall out of that state of grace and to live in duality, to live in hell, to not be in Eden any longer. That is sin, because you are, it is, well, sin, self-inflicted nonsense, S-I-N, self-inflicted nonsense. So we have inflicted upon ourselves the idea of duality, and we're no longer one with God. That was so eloquent. Thank you. What you just distilled represented a lot of years of sitting with things and making distinctions and discerning. I can yeah, tell. well, the thing is that this, this is well understood in the East. It just isn't understood in the West. You say that there's a distinction between who I think I am and who I really am. Yes. Speak about that, because that kind of puts the final touches on this. Exactly. So who you really are is different than who you think you are. Who you think you are is this body, this ego, this, uh, this height, this weight, 
uh, having this bank account, living in this house with these 